Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk business. I'm going to address a question that I get asked all the time and that is, how do you price your interior design services? So if you want to know, then definitely check it out. Now before we jump into this business talk, I do want to share with you guys this really cool poster company that I recently discovered. They're called Mapiful. I'm sure you've already heard about them. The reason why I really like what they offer is because you're able to select a special time and place of something that is memorable to you and kind of create and customize your own poster. I got my Mapiful delivered just yesterday in the mail and I absolutely love how it turned out. When I was designing my poster, I decided to go with the classic black and white Mapiful look and chose the time and place of our wedding anniversary as a memory that is most dear to me. Now, I know that interior designers do have a bad rep for not sharing their secrets, but I'm here to tell you everything that I've learned in these past few months. For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sarah, and I started my own interior design business last year in July. I've been working in the marketing profession for more than seven years, and I decided that design is something that I really like and I want to pursue, and so I decided to go back to school. I did my online education from the interior design Design Institute which is a course that I would recommend to anyone because it was so much fun it was super flexible I was able to do it on a part-time basis and in the end I received a diploma which basically gave me the accreditation to do this work on a full-time basis in this vlog I'm gonna be talking about the different ways in which you can structure your pricing and make sure that what you are offering and charging is not just fair for the client but also fair for you as a designer and the time that you put into your work the information that I'm gonna be sharing with you is based on my experiences working on projects it's based on my learnings through listening to different podcasts watching different interior designers do their work and just attending webinars in general so I hope that what I share with you guys will be useful and if you want to learn then definitely keep on watching the very first tip that I'm gonna share with you is not rocket science it's pretty straightforward and that is do your market research for me I'm located within Canada and so the first thing that I did was I basically did a Google search on what kind of designers are in my area what they're offering and just really learn the kind of packages that they sell to their clients now this is something that you will definitely want to do if you want to compare your competitive market you can go on their specific websites sometimes designers usually post right on their website what kind of pricing they have and sometimes you just have to send them a friendly email and kind of pretend that you are the client and then they'll be more than happy to let you know about how their process works another thing that you could do is actually go on Etsy I know Etsy is a platform where you can buy handmade items but you'll be surprised there's actually a lot of freelance service workers who basically provide their services online you know such as photographers filmmakers and you'll even find interior designers on there so I would suggest you go on there and kind of see what are the different packages they're offering sometimes their packages are as low as hundred dollars but that's because they're only providing you with a paint selection so they will provide you on a per room basis what kind of color coordination you should have what palette you should have and what kind of accent wall you should have so that will give you a really good idea of what kind of services you can put together for yourself number two now this is something that is really important and that is experience as a designer you have to look at how much experience you have how many projects you've worked on as an independent designer or within a team and the reason why I say that is because if you're just starting out then you want to keep that into consideration if you get a client inquiry and they know that you're just starting out they're also kind of taking a risk by going with you versus going with somebody who's a little bit more experienced and when they do that they're coming in with the assumption that you will provide them with the lesser rate with the more cost-effective option 
relation and that's mainly how the client relationship works so again if you're just starting out you do want to charge for your services but you want to be cautious about the rate that you offer I want to give you my own personal experience when I launched my brand last year in July I was getting a lot of inquiries one of which was a commercial project which I took on right away I didn't really take too much time to think about the pricing or how much my services were gonna cost I basically took that project as an opportunity to grow my portfolio and really show the audience my design style and what I'm capable of and in that scenario I kind of just dove right into it without having a too high of a rate for my services and that was something that the client was looking for as well they were launching their very first retail location and they had a limited budget and that's when both the client and the designer found a middle ground and we worked together on a project that turned out really well so that's one way that you can evaluate whether you want to raise your prices high or low now of course down the years as you take on projects you are going to learn so much you're going to come across so many hurdles you're going to be problem solving you're going to meet with so many contractors trade workers and just naturally you're going to gain the experience on how pricing works in this industry and with that experience as your company grows as you grow as a designer you're going to of course start to hire a team you're going to start to hire help and when you do that your operating costs are gonna go up and in that situation you have have every right to mark up your pricing because at the end of the day you are running a business and you are trying to make a profit so it's all a matter of evaluating your experience how much you know about a project and how much you know about actually doing the work when I actually started working on projects I realized that it is so much harder than it looks there were so many new things that I learned just how to even have a relationship with your contractor like how to manage their time how you should manage your own time everything Everything requires a muscle and you can only start to really strengthen that muscle as you work on projects. Now, the third tip goes hand in hand with the experience. It's basically you finding your speciality. Now there are designers who basically have a various group of services. They offer everything from residential to commercial to retail. But there are also some designers who are very specific about what they offer. For example, there is designer A who has a list of 10 services on her website that she offers. Then there's designer B that only offers one service which is indoor pool renovations. And if you're the client who is looking for something as specific as indoor pool renovation, you better bet that you're going to go with designer B. So you really have to think about your speciality and only focus your energy on taking on projects that focus that speciality because that way you are able to hike up your prices and let your audience and clientele know that you are an expert at this job, that this is something that you work on all year round and that you will deliver a product that they will be super satisfied with. Now the last tip that I want to share and this is probably the most important is something that I've learned over my time working as a designer. There are two main ways in which you can structure your pricing. One is square footage and one is time. Now I personally think that doing it on a square footage basis is not effective. It works really well for someone who is a painter or a carpenter because if they're painting walls and they definitely want to know how much square footage they have to cover because based on the size they're able to determine how many hours it's going to take for them to paint every single wall. However, for a designer, this formula doesn't necessarily work because you could be looking at something as small as a powder room, which has a really tiny square footage, but you could be spending a lot of hours if it's a full renovation. If it means you have to you know, peel out the carpet or the tiles or put in new flooring, if it means you have to completely redo the space from the ceiling to the walls, you can be spending a lot of time working on the elevation plans, on the drawings, sourcing materials. It's Something that you have to think about when you're looking at pricing your services. The second method is based on time and this is something that I have applied to my own services because every project's evaluation is based on your time. How much time are you going to be spending from beginning to end to complete a project? And this means every little step from the initial phone consultation to the on-site planning to the concept mood boards to the drawings to the purchasing to the delivery and lastly to the install styling and final reveal moment for the client. So you have to basically estimate how many hours it's going to take for you to work on a project and base your pricing on that. Now in order for you to apply this formula to your business, 
you have to identify how much should you be charging per hour. How do you calculate that? It's all based on the previous tips that I had shared. You have to look at your competitive market. What is another designer in your area charging? Secondly, you have to look at your own experience. If you are an experienced designer, then you can have a higher per hour rate. And lastly, you look at your speciality. Some designers charge as low as $20 an hour, and some designers charge up as high as $100 to $200 per hour. That's basically how I price all of my services, and if you want to check them out, you can visit my website. I basically have three packages in which I kind of estimate how much on an average basis time it's going to take me, and that basically determines my package rate. Now, you might be watching this and saying, where do I even begin to figure out my hourly rate if I've never worked on a project? That's a pretty good question. And my advice to you there would be start with your bedroom. Imagine that your bedroom is completely empty. It's a bedroom of a client and they've just come to you to ask for your expertise on how you would design it. And when you start to take on this imaginary project, I want you to include every single step that you would include for any other project. So from the very first phone consultation, whether it's for half an hour or for an hour to the site evaluation, so you actually measuring out your bedroom to the actual design aspect which is coming up with design boards coming up with the furnishings and the decor and really take those hours and see how long it took you and that will give you a pretty good idea of how much time it will take for you to let's say design a bedroom and the best part about doing this exercise is that you can take whatever you've created for your bedroom and use it to post on your social media so you can actually show the clients that if you had a bedroom to design this is what it would look like and that will give your audience a really good understanding of what your design style is like and what kind of work you deliver as a designer so that's all of the tips that I wanted to share with you guys I hope that it was helpful as always if you have any questions feel free to DM me on my Instagram page because I find that a lot of you guys message me there I'm always available to answer your questions and give you the help as you need because I know exactly what it feels like to start your business and be completely lost until next time. Bye.